Do you plan to organize events and have no idea where to start from? Discover Pretix, the ultimate platform to manage events from ticket sales to marketing and on-site organization. It includes all the features you need to make your online and offline events a success. And good news, it's free and open source. Before diving to the platform overview, let's see the different options available to start using it. You can use the cloud version, including a free tier up to 2,500 ticket sales, then a 2.5% fee is applied, or you can also install and self-host it on your own server. Together, we'll see how to install the self-hosted version on the cloud provider of your choice or on your own VM using our platform Elestio to take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance automatically. After opening ls.io, click on Login, then deploy my first service, search for Pretix and click Select. You have the choice between different providers offering different regions and service plan. I will choose Hetzner. Then choose between the different regions and service plan you need. I will take two CPU and four gigabytes of RAM and click on next. You have the choice between different level of support. I will keep the included one. And once you're ready, click on create service. When your instance is up and running, click on display your software credentials. Copy the password to your clipboard and access your instance by following the link. To login, enter your email and paste the password and click on login. We arrive on an empty dashboard. So first thing we want to do is to create an event. So create a new event. But first, before being able to create new events, we need to create organizers. So let's head to this. We are currently in user mode, so open admin mode. And then we can create a new organizer. Let's say we have a main LSTO account. So let's name it LSTO short form LSTO, we can use the same but without uppercase letters. Hit save and now we can create a new event. So click on create a new event. We can select between the different organizer but we have only created one. And we have the choice between two event types. Either a singular event or non-event shop, which means it's individual configuration. If it's, it's not meant to be repeated in the future, or event series or time slot booking, which means when you want to organize an event multiple times that will share the same configuration or will have slight differences between them. Then because Predix is multi-language, you can choose the different language that will be applied to it. So I will keep English and I will also add a community translation, which is French. So I will be able to verify if it's correct or not. On the other ones, it will be more complicated. Now we can click on continue, which was hidden behind my face. So event name, we have one input per language. So you can reuse the same if you want to, but me, I will translate it. In English, it will be webinar, how to use Corteza Low Code platform, which is our latest video. And in French, it will be webinar, comment utiliser la plateforme low code Corteza. Then the short form you can set to random, but let's write instead webinar Corteza. Then you have to decide the time that your event start and finish. So it can be on multiple days. Let's say it's tomorrow from 10 to tomorrow 11. So it's an event that only lasts one hour. You can enter a location, but let's say it's an online event. So we will just write online and en ligne. You can add geo coordinates if you want it to be precise on the map. Then very important if your event isn't free to set the event currency correctly. So let's skip euro and you can add a tax rate. Let's say it's 20%. Default language we will keep English, the event time zone UTC. And then we can decide when we start pre-sale of tickets. If we don't, it will be available every time. So we'll keep it like this. Then we can click on the continue button, which is here behind my head. We have that nice message saying us congratulations, you just created an event. And automatically it generated two tickets for me with regular ticket and the accurate translation BS standard with a default optional price of 35 euros and 100 capacity. So you can sell 100 tickets of regular ticket. And for the reduced ticket, it's at a lower price and only 50. For this demo, we can keep the default settings. It's fine. Then we can enable or disable features. Ticket downloads. Do we want our customers to be able to download their ticket? It's something that is very useful. So let's skip it. A waiting list, which means if there are not any more tickets available, they can subscribe to a waiting list and if there is a refund or someone cancel its ticket, 
the users on the waiting list will be notified and be able to purchase their tickets. Useful, let's use it too. We can show the number of tickets left. Let's use it so it will add some pressure to people waiting before purchasing their tickets. And if we want to make it mandatory for our attendees to fill in their names, and it's something quite useful if you don't want an anonymous user. Then we can choose to enable payment, but we won't set it up there because there are not all the settings here. So we will configure it just after. And then getting in touch with you. So you enter your contact address. So let's say support at ls.io and a imprint URL, which will lead to our website. So let's use ls.io. Then hit save. Perfect. So we arrive on the dashboard of this specific event. So we can see the number of attendees, the number of active products, the number of tickets remaining, but we'll see later after doing some test purchases. And an important thing to notice is that currently our event is in test mode which means it's not available to everyone, but only to the team members of your Pratix team. So you can check the event page. You can do some purchase to see how it goes. You can test the badge that we will see later before making the event live and making it able for people to discover your event. So let's enable payment for our tickets before diving into the public view of our event. So go to settings, head to payment, but currently we only have gift card available. So let's go to plugins, payment providers and enable Stripe. Now we can go back to payments. We are able to see Stripe, click on settings, enable payment method and add your keys. So the public key, me, I'm using a test key. So we'll be able to use a fake card to do some payments and same for the secret key. But if you are also doing tests with a test key, don't forget to replace them with your live key. Then you have a bunch of settings you can enable, but let's keep it simple for now. Head to the bottom and click on save. Perfect. So now you can see we have Stripe enabled. We can go to the dashboard, which is the dashboard of this event. Click on shop URL. And this is what our end users will be able to see without, of course, the red banner telling us it's in test mode and same for the warning. You have the two type of tickets available where it is. So currently it's just written online because I wrote it. You have the date of the event and you have the conversion with your own time zone that is detected on your device. I guess automatically it will switch to the language of your computer. But me, my computer is in English, so I can switch to French. And you have our translation that was written, for example, on the title. But you also have the warning that is translated because there is a global translation about Predix. Let's get back to English and let's purchase two tickets. So let's choose the regular tickets. We'll choose two of them, then add to cart and it automatically lock our tickets for 30 minutes. So people won't be able to purchase them. So it avoids conflict of purchasing tickets that are not available anymore. I have the total calculated, it's displaying me the 20% tax, which is included in the price. Proceed with checkout. We need to enter our information, so I will enter my email address. And because we said we want the full name of our attendees, I have to fill it here, the attendee name. I enter my information and either I can book the two for me or I can enter another name. But if I want to enter the same for everyone, I can click on copy answers from above. But let's use a different name. So Joan Do and click on continue. Now we are at the second step, the payment processing. Because we enabled only Stripe, we can choose credit card Google Play. It's a radio button, but we have only that option available. And we have to enter our card. And because it's in test mode, I can enter 4242 with my Stripe test keys. Enter a date in the future, a fake code and a fake zip. Then I can click on continue. It's doing the processing on Stripe. We have a review order before doing it and place binding order. The test payment worked successfully. So we received your payments below for details. We can download our tickets, either both of them at once. We generate a PDF included 
both tickets with a QR code to scan and our information and the date. We can even customize those tickets appearance. Or if you want to send it to your friends or to your coworkers, you can just download it individually and send it to them. Perfect, let's go back to our event dashboard. Now we have a clear overview of our event. We have two attendees. The total revenue is 70 euros because of the two tickets at 35. And we have only 98 regular ticket left and we still have all the reduced ticket left. This is the global overview, but you have precise overview of it. If you go back to orders, you can see the list of purchases. And if you open one order, you have more details about each ticket purchased and information about the person that purchase it. You have a trading history on the right showing you all the different information. So you can see an email has been sent to notify the user, which is true. I received two emails. So this one is from the user perspective with the information and the link to get my tickets, but also another one to the admin to be notified that someone purchased tickets on our platform. And on the order page, you have all the tools for one customer support to cancel an order, download the ticket and send it back, or even refund the users if it's necessary. And let's say at your event, you are serving food and you want them to choose between different things. First, you could add a prompt in your form to buy the tickets, but you could also contact your users, ask them and enter in the comment they choose chicken and you have the list of all of those information. So instead of adding comments, you can go to settings. Let's leave it because I wrote it without saving. And you would go to customer and attendee data. And then you have what we did, ask for attendee names, ask for email addresses per ticket. So it could send it to each user, but then you can add custom fields. So manage question, create a new question and you add whatever you need. So what food menu do you want between? And you will choose it. And it could also be specified only for one type of tickets or all tickets. Let's go back to our settings, go to plugins and enable the badges plugin. Once done on the left, we have the badges section that appeared. And badges is for the day of the event. You can give badges or ask them to print them. So at the event, everyone had their name displayed. So let's take the default one. And currently the badges, it's just displaying the name of the attendee, but it's a dynamic. So based on your name, it will be displayed here. And you have a complete builder here of badges. So on the right, you can choose to add a PDF if you want a custom background, but let's keep it simple. Instead, we will add new objects. So you can add Pretix logo because thanks to them, this tool is available. We can resize it, put it on the bottom right. We can also add some text. Let's put it on the top left. And the content, you have the choice between dynamic data from your users or from your event. So by default, it's event name. We can keep it. Let's go and add another text, maybe on the bottom left, or maybe I move the wrong one. So here and here. And instead of event name, we will add the event date. You can customize the form, the colors, but it's not the point here, just to show you that feature. Now let's click on save, go back to our orders, open it. And now you can see, because we enable the badges plugin, we have the PDF and the last thing is the badge. And it generated the badge that we just created. So webinar, maybe I could expand the width so it would be full width, but here still it's fine. We have the title of the event the date, we could specify the hours, but I didn't select the right one, the logo of Predix and the attendee name. And if you go to Predix website, they also offer hardware that you can use so you can rent for your event. So if you go to batch printing, you have an estimate of the price. If you want to have printers available at your event to print the badges and give it to your attendees, you can also create vouchers for your events. So let's create one, create a new voucher, voucher code, let's say, early bird, maximum usage, only 10 people will be able to do it. But let's say it's valid forever. On which pro product it will be on reduced tickets, price effect, reduce price by 50%. We have more option, but let's keep it simple. Click on save. And if we go back to our event page, we can take the reduced tickets, apply early bird voucher, redeem voucher, you can see we have the discounted price. 
once you have done tests and you are ready to put your event in live mode, you can switch here, click here to change. You can decide if you want to delete the orders or if they were accurate, but let's delete all orders, disable test mode, and now the warning disappears, our event is now alive. And let's say we are the day of the event, we can go to the check-in section, we can create different lists, but let's use the default one, which include everyone. But because I deleted the orders, we can see it. But from there, you can say if a attendee is present or not. So you can easily see between the list of your attendees and check when someone arrives. So you can see who didn't come to the event or who is trying to come, but is not invited. Currently, we are on the screen of this specific event, but we can go back to our main account and create other events. And of course, don't forget to add the other users from your team from the users section. This is it for this platform overview, but as always, I recommend you to watch the Pretix website and also their documentation to see all the different features available that I didn't cover in this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed discovering Pretix with us. Please hit the like button to help our content be more visible to other open source software lovers. If you want to continue discovering great features with us, you can watch this video here.